Welcome to the Range Report. I'm really excited about tonight's content. We're going to announce a sponsorship very, very shortly, short interview coming up on the show. But also, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Patty Dench, Australia's first ever medalist in shooting at Olympic Games. She won a bronze in LA in 1984. What a fantastic lady she is. She won the medal at 52 and now at 88 is still as sharp as a tack and very feisty and very competitive. And I really want a big shout out to Pat Zeppieri and the New South Wales Amateur Pistol Association, the President Brian Cheers. They put us in contact with Paddy Dench and they've got a story coming up in their magazine in a couple of weeks and they've kindly allowed us to run our story on air here tonight. So sit back and enjoy one of the great Olympians, Paddy Dench. So, Paddy, can we go right back to the early days of when you started pistol shooting? How did you get involved? Well, it was really just by accident. I uh, met this guy who was a shooter, used to sit outside the range, read a book. And they said, oh, come and have a shot, Paddy. I said, oh, no. I said, I can't look down the sides of a rifle. I'd be hopeless. Oh, we'll fix you. So they put a browning in my hand, put patches over my left eye on my glasses, now, this is where you aim underneath the white and squeeze the trigger. And so I got all the shots on the target, and most of them in the black. Oh, I said, this is good. I like this. The process of qualifying to go to the Olympics in 1984, what was it like in Australia back then? How did, how did you qualify? Did it have well, you had to go away and shoot in competition, you know, like maybe go to the shoot up in Newcastle uh, or the Orange. Had to, you had to go to competitions. Uh, where they had the CMPC shoots, and you had to submit your scores of what you were shooting. And then you had to go down to a camp. Sometimes we had them up in Queensland, uh, but they, know, they may not have been for the Olympics, but we went to Canberra, to uh, the range down there, and we'd have to shoot scores down there. And that's when you qualified. And, and then you get a letter, on, I'm assuming, from the Australian Olympic Committee to say that you're selected in the team? Yeah, I think it was a letter. I don't know whether it was a letter or a phone call. So I got that sort of in the March, because we went over there in the March before. So that was great. That was exciting to be selected, yeah. Yeah, very proud moment to get selected and obviously you want to go there and do your absolute best. Oh yeah, that's when the hard work started. That, then I had to work harder than what I was doing just to shoot. When I, when I was selected, I then, I was still, I was walking 15 kilometres a week. I was going to the gym at least three times a week for muscle toning. And, I, and then to, when I went to go to the Olympics, I just shot four and five times a week. I, I think you're ahead of the game. Uh, some of the athletes today don't understand the work away from the range that they need to do, and that was obviously part of your preparation. Oh, yes. I, I, when, when I was shooting, I used to even go to the chiropractor to look after my elbow, and uh, he'd give me um, like a treatment on my elbow and, uh, and just look after me because, you know, I had beautiful muscles in this arm because the gun weighed two pounds or one kilo, so you had to have strong legs and a strong arm, and I had both. 84 Olympics, uh, reasonably successful from the Australian point of view, four gold, eight silver, 12 bronze. Do you remember mixing with those athletes and, and some of the names that you went away with in 84? It's really strange, you know, you go, to the, you go to the Olympics, when you go down there to have breakfast in the canteen, everyone sat in their little groups. They sat in their little groups. They sat in their little groups because they were the people that they knew. And I was the only lady pistol shooter, and I went with Sylvia, who was the rifle shooter. 
And so she was shooting different times than me, so we hardly crossed paths unless we went to bed because we were in the same room. So you, you're really wandering around on your own. You know, people don't... It, they don't really mix. Well, they didn't mix with me because I, I was 52 when I went to the Olympics. So all these other athletes over there are young. They were young people. I was. I would have been old to them. I think I would have been one of the oldest people in the in the team at 52. Yeah, you were in in the Olympic final. You're about around 10 to 12 years older than the gold and silver medalists, and uh, 20 odd years older than the rest of the field. So, uh, do you think people maybe looked at you and went? Is she an athlete? Yeah, that's right, you see, yeah. But you see, people don't realise shooting is a wonderful uh, sport to get into. I mean, I've got one leg shorter than the other from a car accident. I used to be a golfer. I just won the gold medal at golf. And I was going to play golf all my life. And, and then I couldn't walk the course. And so people with these kind of uh, disabilities, you can still stand and shoot. Get yourself fit and put your mind to it. It's a great sport. Take me through the Olympic competition. How were you leading into, into the qualifying, nerves, uh, anticipation, excitement? Well, the thing is, you know, I'd had so much international experience that I felt quite comfortable on the range. And I was very fit. And being fit just stood me in great stead. I reckon that was the best thing that I could have done to get myself as fit as I was. And um, I, the only time that my heart thumped were my last five shots on duelling. I was, I shot 49-49, I shot 50-50-50. And the last five shots, I never thought I could keep my arms straight to come up on the target. But with all the training that I'd done, I had good trigger control, I, I shot by my breathing, and I was the only time I took my earmuffs off. And the guy behind me, big American, he says, you got them, Paddy? I looked in my scope and I had another 50. Now that, I got that because I had trained and trained and trained, and I was fit. You actually shot off for the bronze medal. Yep. So there was a fair bit of pressure on that one, and the competitor, I think it was about 30 years old. Yeah, she, oh, she, was a, she was in the army. She was a young Chinese girl. She looked about 18, I think. Anyway, I beat her. <laughs> that was the main thing. Yeah, it was a, a Chinese shooter, uh, Lu Hai Ying. She was 32 years of age. Oh, was she 32? And, and you beat her, so, it, you know. I was 52, so, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> well, I, I'd, I'd had quite a few shoot-offs and I'd won the whole lot of them. So it, it was, it, it uh, see, I'd, the experience stood me in great stead. The experience that I'd had before I went to the Olympics got me through. You were ready to go. The gold medal went to Linda Thom from Canada. Uh, did you know her? You would have known her from the world circuit? Yeah, I'd seen her and Ruby Fox came second. I was shooting with Ruby Fox down in Fort Worth because we went there for three weeks before we went to the Olympics and it was just Ruby and I on this whopping big shooting range down at the army base. What do you remember about the younger athletes? Because I said you had around 30 to 32 years age on, on some of them. Uh, Liu Hian came fourth. Uh, she was from China. There was a uh, girl from Norway, uh, Christina Fries. Did, did you know many of those athletes, or they were just on the line with you? And yeah, yeah, I knew, I knew, uh, I knew, uh, I knew a couple from Scandinavian countries. I just can't remember their names. Just acquaintances. Just acquaintances. Yeah. So you came back to Australia, as you said, you were Athlete of the Year, um, obviously a lot of accolades, winning the first ever shooting medal for Australia. It's pretty special seeing that uh, shooting's been in the Olympics since the early, since the first modern Olympics. Mm. Well, everybody wanted to talk to me, which was great. And I did a lot of PR work and we got a lot of new shoes. Uh, and and I, had, I, I was sort of never done that sort of thing, but it was easy to do because I was talking about something that I loved. 